My goal is to introduce you to 12 things we know about how the brain works. I call these brain rules. For each rule, I present the science, introduce you to the researchers behind it, and then offer ideas for how the rule might apply to our daily lives, especially at work and at school. The brain is complex, and I am taking only slivers of information from each subject, not comprehensive, but, I hope, accessible. Here is a sampling of the ideas you'll encounter. We are not used to sitting at a desk for eight hours a day. From an evolutionary perspective, our brains developed while we walked or ran as many as 12 miles a day. The brain still craves this experience. That's why exercise boosts brain power. Brain rule number two, in sedentary populations like our own. Exercisers outperform couch potatoes in long-term memory, reasoning, attention, and problem-solving tasks. As you no doubt have noticed if you've ever sat through a typical PowerPoint presentation, people don't pay attention to boring things. Brain rule number six, you've got seconds to grab someone's attention and only 10 minutes to keep it. At 9 minutes and 59 seconds, you must do something to regain attention and restart the clock. Something emotional, something relevant. Also, the brain needs a break. That's why I use stories in this book to make many of my points. Ever feel tired about 3 o'clock in the afternoon? That's because your brain really wants to take a nap. You might be more productive if you did. In one study, a 26-minute nap improved NASA pilots' performance by 34%. And whether you get enough rest at night affects your mental agility the next day. Sleep well, think well. Brain rule number three. We'll meet a man who can remember everything he reads after seeing the words just once. Most of us do more forgetting than remembering, of course, and that's why we must repeat to remember. Brain rule number seven. When you understand the brain's rules for memory, you'll see why I want to destroy the notion of homework. We'll find out why the terrible twos only look like active rebellion, but actually are a child's powerful urge to explore. Babies may not have a lot of knowledge about the world, but they know a whole lot about how to get it. We are powerful and natural explorers. Brain rule number 12. This never leaves us, despite the artificial environments we've built for ourselves. The Grump Factor I am a nice guy, but I am a grumpy scientist. For a study to appear in this book, it has to pass what some of my clients call MGF, the Medina Grump Factor. That means the supporting research for each of my points must first be published in a peer-reviewed journal and then successfully replicated. Many of the studies have been replicated dozens of times. To stay as reader-friendly as possible, extensive references are not in this book, but can be found at www.brainrules.net slash references. No prescription. There's a great deal we don't know about the brain. I am a developmental molecular biologist specializing in psychiatric disorders. I have been a private consultant for most of my professional life, working on countless research projects beyond the lab bench. Over and over in my career, I have seen what a distance there is between a gene, one's DNA instructions, and a behavior, how a person actually acts. It's very hard to say with certainty that a specific behavior is caused by a specific gene, or that changing X behavior will produce Y result. Occasionally, I would run across articles and books that made startling claims based on, quote, recent advances in brain science about how we should teach people and do business. The Mozart effect comes to mind, the popular idea that listening to classical music makes students better at math, or the notion that analytical people are left brain people and creative people are right brain people and each must be managed accordingly. Sometimes I would panic wondering if the authors were reading some literature totally off my radar screen. I speak several dialects of brain science, and I knew nothing from those worlds capable of dictating best practices for education and for business. In truth, if we ever fully understood how the brain knew how to pick up a glass of water, it would represent a major achievement. There was no need for me to panic. Brain research still cannot, without equivocation, tell us how to become better teachers, parents, business leaders, or students. In addition to the ideas you'll find within each chapter, I end each chapter with a few more potential ways to apply the research in our daily lives. 
But these are not prescriptions. These are hypotheses. If you try them, you will be doing your own little research project to see whether they work for you.